Psalm 67. Seven, the stand, <clears throat> and uh, I was reading over this, saw some things I hadn't seen before, <clears throat> and uh, we might call the study this morning, Why All the Unrest? <clears throat> Why All the Unrest? And so we have the psalmist, this is not David, it says a musician on Neganoth, which means a stringed instrument. But it is a psalm or psalm, it says. Verse 1, Psalm 67, God be merciful unto us and bless us. Cause his face to shine upon us. Say law. And what does say law mean? I mean? Meditate. Stop right there and think this out. Go back and digest this. That thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Selah. Let's think on that one. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then, Shall the earth yield her increase? God, even our own, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So thank you, Lord, for these wonderful verses here. To some, it might just be a, a, a group of words together to make nice thoughts, but we see a, a plan here how to end our personal lives of unrest and our national unrest and our world unrest uh, through this formula here. So help us take it out into the world now in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, as you're seated. So why all the unrest? <clears throat> I uh, don't know about you, but you know these last uh, two years with the election and the, and the uh, pandemic, and the economy going up and down, round and round, and though the nations are divided over several things now, <clears throat> so we could say the whole world is unpredictable at its very best right now. Get amen on that one? Yeah. The whole world is unpredictable at its very best right now. Right. And also the whole world is at a level of unrest never seen before on this earth where the entire world is going through the same thing. I don't mean just China or just America or just <clears throat> South Pacific, but every nation right now is doing and living the same way in uncertainty, unpredictableness, and unsafe as well. Amen. So we have had calamities of World War I and ancient wars, Second World War, but what we have now is not going away. <clears throat> this uh, worldwide pandemic uh, is gonna get better in some areas and then it'll get worse and get better and get worse and get better and get worse because Jesus said it was gonna be that way. Perilous times shall come. He gives you the whole list of that. Uh, since the love of many shall wax cold, families against families, people in those families against their own, you know, brothers, sisters, mothers. And Jesus said it's, it's going to be like that. And so we're there. And uh, it is irreversible. So we have this unrest, anxiety, they call it depression. The, I was just thinking and told my wife this morning, I said with uh, this disaster in Afghanistan, uh, after 20 years, Brother Harper, our former missionary to Canada, who's now a, uh, a 
a lieutenant in the Navy as a chaplain in Palm Springs. It was 106 degrees there yesterday, by the way. I'm, I'm Brother Harper is no doubt busier now than he's ever been with counseling because it didn't affect the guys in Afghanistan. It affected all the military in America and other in our allies that, that we would give so much away to the godless communists and the Islamists and the terror, just give it, just give it to them. And so that, that it's, uh, that's why the unrest is here and it affects us. We turn the TV on, I mean, would we, uh, oh, Louisiana's all messed up now for the hurricane. Well, kill more of them, uh, the same storm killed more in the northeast of New Jersey, 40 some people died up there. And uh, it's level, they won't have electricity in New Orleans for at least a month, maybe a year in certain places. And then now uh, it's just one after thing after the other, one thing after the other. This is a new week, and guess what? More's on the way. Yeah. So we have to get a hold of this in our personal lives, not to let us be the victims of unrest and unpredictability. Yeah. Somebody's got to be stable and make right decisions. Right. And so uh, as the old carpenter's rule is what? Measure it twice and what? Cut it once, that's right. Measure it twice and cut it once. So let's see here, there's four questions we are gonna see in these seven verses. And there is a plan for Christians to change all of this in seven verses. This is a program of uh, stability and bringing rest to our personal lives and uh, ridding ourselves of anxiety. First we see here, the first question is verse one. What do we need from God? It says the psalmist here is asking for something. Actually, he's asking for three things. So question one is, what do we need from God? You know, when we pray, normally we ask God for something for us, don't we? Instead of for somebody else first. It says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause thy face to shine upon us. Selah. <clears throat> so, first we see that the uh, writer is asking for mercy. What does he say? God be what? Merciful unto us. Now this mercy, we're going to call it eternal mercy. Anybody here that possesses eternal mercy? If you're saved, you do have that, you know. Look at Luke 18, verse 13 real quick, or listen. Luke 18 verse 13 about the publican and the uh, publican and the, the Pharisee here in verse 10 two men went up to the temple to pray the public Pharisee and the other a publican or a tax collector in verse 13 and the publican tax collector standing afar off would not lift up so much of, as his eyes unto heaven this is 18 and verse 13 of Luke but smote upon his breast saying Say it with me. God be merciful to me, a sinner. So what do we need from God? We need eternal mercy first. Then we need daily mercy to go along with that. We sin. Anybody here know that? That, uh, you know, the Nazarenes, most of them believe in sinless perfection, that you can actually be so sanctified that you or as perfect as Jesus Christ. It's called the doctrine of sin, sin, sinless perfection in uh, the strong old time Nazarenes. That's, that's part of their church doctrine. And uh, But we, we know that we need daily mercy as well as eternal mercy, don't we? So what do you need from God? We, we just need mercy all the time. Because we're guilty. God doesn't see us that way. He sees us as redeemed children, but we know better. We know we're saved, but we know that we're failures as well. We need eternal mercy. Now he said, also secondly, he needs blessings. So the writer says, be merciful unto us and blank, blank. What is it? Bless us. So be merciful unto us and then God bless us. And uh, so the blessings, what we would find, uh, what we need every day, daily blessings. Of course, salvation is a blessing. If you uh, get the, uh, start to complain, think about 
living forever, okay, that'll kind of wash out your complaints. You think, I'm going to live forever. Why am I griping? Why, why am I belly aching? And, uh, you know, we, we're so spoiled. We, oh, uh, I don't like that brand of coffee. I, it's just, it's not what I'm used to. I mean, we're, you know, we used to teach manners in children's church. We had a book, and one of the characters was Picky Pete. We'd always teach the kids how not to be picky. And I uh, forget the other characters are really, uh, and we should have, the pastor of the church while I was doing junior church should have been teaching that to the congregation of 500 uh, about being picky peace. So the blessings, anybody got any blessings lately? Oh, yes. We've heard, of, or heard a few just now. And then there's a third thing we see here. So what do we need from God? We need uh, mercy, eternal mercy, uh, everyday mercy. We need daily blessings. And we have eternal blessings through salvation. And then there's one other thing, and it says here, and cause his face to shine upon us. So us, 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 three times. So there's three things here. And that is future favor from God. We want daily blessings, uh, your daily bread, Jesus called it. But we also want the future, for God's favor in the future. Some Christians just live day to day like the world, and uh, but we we want how many like to have the favor of God till the day you die? Yeah, yeah. I mean why why bank why bank on one day? Uh, why not say Lord, help me structure my life, plan ahead for Thy favor. All right. So guess what? Most people can plan for the future. They just think I can do that later. Uh, most of these COVID victims said I planned on getting the shot. But later, and their dad, another one died on the news yesterday, left a wife and five children, and I had planned to get it, but he was waiting. And people are going to go to hell based on waiting, are they not? Yeah. See how it's going to turn out? But it'll be too late, just like people are putting stuff off today. So we need three things. What do we need from God in verse 1? Mercy, blessings, and future favor of God, as he said, and cause his face to shine upon us, say law. Now secondly, what does God need from us is the important question here. Not what do we need from God, but what does he need from us? And verse 2 uh, tells us that. Verse 2 says, That thy way, the word way reminds you of something Jesus said, correct? I am the that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among who? All nations. This is a missionary verse of missionary verses here. So what does God need from us? <clears throat> he simply needs us to spread the gospel earthwide and nationwide. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1, verse 8, quickly. Acts 1, 8, we know that most of us that are mission-minded. And it says in uh, Acts 1.8, this is what God needs from us. And, and these are the final words of Jesus Christ before the ascension. Jesus said in Acts 1.8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall. Don't say might. Don't say could. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Springfield, Jerusalem, and in Judea, Missouri, and in Samaria, USA, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. There's your four point plan right there. You start here, there, all across the nation, and then everywhere else on earth. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said in the Gospels also. And so uh, what they call this simultaneous missions <coughs> is that, uh, as I've said, planting a garden. <coughs> How many know that when you plant a garden, you only want to put one tomato plant in? No. Well, you want to see how it's going to do, right? Daddy, can we have a stalk of corn? Oh, no, no, we don't want to take a chance on that. You know, we have to see if the tomato grows. And, well, if it doesn't grow, well, we won't have a garden. Most people do mission work like that. 
They try missions, they don't do missions. They try tithing, they don't do tithing. They try the Bible, they don't do the Bible. And expect their life to be one of rest and peace and blessing. When, when God says do this, he means do this. He don't mean do that. It's sort of like, I know my dad used to make us rake leaves as kids. And uh, when he come back, he expected them all to be up and done and out and back in the woods or get, just get them out of the yard. And so you can imagine giving a, a, a child a task to break up the, this area here. And then you come back and it's not raked. And you say, what, what, how come you didn't rake the leaves? Well, Dad, look what I did. I went over here and, and, I, and I washed the porch off for you. Yeah, but I didn't ask you to do that. I, said, I know, Dad, but I, I, I wanted to do it just for you. Yeah, but what about the leaves? Well, I, I, don't, like to, I don't like to rake leaves, Dad. That's the way Christians treat God. God says, do this. And they say, oh, but that's so hard. And I don't like that. I'll just do this in the name of God when he comes back. I'll change God's mind by what I want. Amen. What blasphemy that is. So what does God need from us to spread the gospel? So when you plant a garden, you put in as much stuff as you can. Right? So we support missionaries in Springfield, Missouri, church planting nationwide, church planting worldwide. We just... That's what he wants us, that's what he expects from us to be involved in world evangelization. Amen. So what do we need from God is mercy, blessings, and a future favor. What does God need for us as we go back to Psalm 67? And so he wants us to spread the gospel earthwide and nationwide is what it says in verse number two. That thy way may be known upon earth Thou saving health among all nations. Now we see here thirdly out of four things. Third question is how do we accomplish this impossible goal? Over in verse 3, 4a and then verse 5 tells us how do we accomplish this impossible goal? I mean can you imagine standing there listening to Jesus say now I got a couple things I want you to do while I'm gone. I just want you to take over the globe with the gospel of Christ. Just, just, for how long? Well, just till I get back, that's all. Just maybe a few thousand years. Uh, if I tell you how long, you won't, you'll wait till the last minute to try to get it done. And then they did. Remember, they stood there gazing, and the angels had to say, What are you doing here? Didn't you hear what he said? You remember reading that? It's in the next verse. And so uh, we have here how. Do we do this? How do we accomplish this impossible goal that Jesus Christ gave to his local church, visible church there? Well, we see in verse 3, it says, here's what we do. Let the what? People what? Praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Verse 5. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Now, we think we are serving God when we go busy, busy ourselves in physical ministry. We, we really start with praising the Lord. When's the last time, and I say this to myself as well, when's the last time before you got out of bed you just stopped and said, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Don't take long, you know. And you know what it does? It keeps us from being selfish first thing in the morning. So it says individually we can do this. Let the, it says, let the people praise thee, O God. And then it says collectively, let all the people praise thee. Just think of all the Christians every day walked around praising the Lord. In public, he goes on and talks about our individual ministries and our collective ministries with all the Christians, and then in verse it talks about our gladness and singing in public here. Oh, let the nations 
be glad and sing for joy. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. I can't hear you. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, I'm so happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the wonderful peace of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. Down in the depths of my heart. I've got the love of... What did I say? <laughs> Got the love of my blessed Redeemer way down to the... How many know that verse, okay? Well, I did it right the first time, but uh, see if you can find it on Google. Maybe you can learn it and teach it to me. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. Down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Down in my depths I'm going to stay, and I'm so happy. You know how it goes. I see you smiling. You get to drift. So, for a let, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. So we go out. We need to be praising the Lord. When we meet people, let's don't immediately try to make them feel feel guilty. Let's give them something to smile about, some direction to go instead of hiding under a rock because we said so, that's why. You don't find Jesus approaching sinners like that. You, you, you find him facing off a Pharisee trying to kill him more than once. But you don't find Jesus buttonholing people and, you know, let me tell you something. Do you know who you're talking to? I'm God, you know. You just don't find that. That's why he's called the friend of sinners. Because he gave them somewhere to go. <laughs> the ruined life, the maniacs, the demon possessed, and the lepers. So how do we accomplish this impossible goal of spreading the gospel to every nation, earthwide? We accomplish it by praise to God, by being people of gladness and singing, in the public realm, nationwide, worldwide, we want to be an example of Jesus Christ. A lot of people that are Christians are so worldly. What kind of picture did they send about what is Jesus like? Most of the Christians that I know do not read their Bible, open their Bible, know any memory verses because they're going to change anyway with the next Bible, right? Well, I learned this one. I have to learn all over again, minus six words or so. So we do this, we accomplish this by praising God. He, he's worthy of praise. He doesn't need it. You know, we like praise, so it pumps us up, makes us feel good about ourselves, but God doesn't need that. God's never felt bad about himself. God's never had a negative thought about himself. He never will. Right. But he is the uh, potter, we are the clay. Right. Dust to dust, back where he found us. Fourthly, so question one in verse one, what do we need from God? What do we need? Mercy, blessings, and favor, future favor. Second question was what does God need from us? Simply to spread the gospel of Christ to the entire world all at one time, as much as possible, because we do not know what Monday will hold for any of us this morning. Do it now. And then thirdly, how do we accomplish that? Individually, let the people praise thee. Let all the people praise thee collectively as a local church and God's people on the earth. Now, did we hit verse 5? Yes, we did. All right. Now, number 4, fourth question. All right. If we, what can we expect to happen if we do what God said to do? It tells us in verse number uh, <clears throat> six. 6 and 7. 
So what can we expect to happen if we do what we're told to do the way we're told to do it? Then, notice that word, then. It's like, boom, look here, boom, then. Then shall the earth do what? Yield her increase. God, even our own, our own God, you're saved here, our own God shall what? Bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So if we do what God says to do individually and collectively, good things are going to happen. They just can't help but, but happen. So we can expect these things. There's at least three things here. Then, verse 6 says, peace will start to return to the earth. Do you think, I can't call it Mother Earth, but I can call it God's Earth. Do you think the creation is groaning now like Romans tells us it is? St. Corinthians tells us it's groaning, it's aching, the weight of sin is unbearable on the earth. But it says here, then shall be what? Earth. Yield her increase. Anybody still got garden stuff coming in? Yeah. Amen. I've got some stuff coming in. And bean, we have picked beans and smoked ones and a few tomatoes and you brought your stuff in. But isn't it nice that our earth and our yard is producing, is increasing? But it's not like that around the rest of the world. People are starving to death. Thousands are starved to death in some country today because the, the earth is parsed. And those lands, most of those lands are demonically controlled areas. It's because of wicked men. Even though if you send Convoy of Hope and all these other organizations, Samaritan's Purse, all over the earth and give stuff away, it never gets to the people because of the greedy leaders take all the wealth for themselves and their personal families. And it never gets to the bush, it never gets to the citizens because of demonic people. So first we can expect peace will start to return to the earth when God is starting to be uh, obeyed by the Christians especially, and then others follow that, that leadership. Uh, secondly, it says blessings, and secondly, verse 6 and 7, uh, then shall the earth yield or increase, and then secondly, and God, even our own God, shall, what is this? He shall bless us. We are asking for it in verse 1. He says, you will get it here in verse number uh, 6b. God, even our own God, shall bless us. If we do what he said to do about spreading the gospel, making his work our first work, doing exactly what he tells us to do, then blessings of God will return as they should. The earth will return to its peace as it should. And so Proverbs 10.22 I'm going to write a few pages uh, to, Psalm, uh, to Proverbs 10, verse 22. I like this, this verse here. It's what we call a foolproof verse. This one never fails. And uh, look at 10, 22 of Proverbs, and then uh, read it with me together. 10, 22 of Proverbs says what? The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. He addeth no sorrow with it. Hey, man, put, put, put a right, happy verse, put, put that next to it, happy verse. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. He addeth no sorrow with it. So that's the kind of life you want. You want your life to be as trouble-free as possible, wouldn't you say? <coughs> that way you can keep on serving the Lord unhindered. You know, trouble, sickness, problems, they stop us from doing what God asks us to do. Sin gets in the way of blessings. Going back to the psalm here. So we can expect peace will start to return to the earth, it says, the increase of the earth. Our blessings of God will return as they should and our daily needs will be met and our future needs will be met. And then also the third thing we see in verse 7b, the last sentence there, the fear of God will return as it should be. The fear of God shall return. And when they see, see us obeying God, then it brings conviction and thought to their, what are, these are different people. These, they're not like me. 
God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall what we do can affect everybody on this earth if we disobey God it affects everybody on the earth if we obey God it can affect everybody on the earth by the spread of Jesus Christ and the doctrines of Christ amen I'm not letting you go home until you say amen. Okay, amen. <laughs> I knew I could get a rise out of that. And the ends of the earth shall fear him, shall fear him. So the fear of God will return as it should be. You know, nobody fears Allah. They just fear guys with guns that claim to worship this invisible nothing you know Paul said there's only one God idols he said are nothing in Corinthians he said idols are nothing you can offer food to idols he said but they're nothing you shouldn't be too superstitious and hocus pocus because there are no other gods we're not living under Zeus and Jupiter I mean you know they were accused of being these fictitious gods of mythology in the book of Acts. But Paul said there's only one. So Allah is a, is a nothing. Now if any Muslims watch this video, they might come and burn the church down. But it still ain't no Allah. And still Muhammad is rotting in hell today for his wickedness and right. teaching people barbarism and, uh, and all kinds of ungodly things with 11-year-old girls when he had his wives and his harem. What an ungodly religion to follow. Now, so we have four questions. What do we need from God? What does God need from us? How do we accomplish this impossible goal? What can we expect to happen? So we see these wonderful things here. If we just individually and collectively do this, Things can really go go well for us. Do you see that? Yes. Amen. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a a real prayer meeting in Washington D.C. and the government just said, "If God, if you're real, please. We're sorry. As I said the other day, we're sorry." of what we've done against the Bible, would you please show, show yourself, show favor on us. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see the temperatures change and go back to the normal seasons? And wouldn't it be, a, that'd be a wonderful, but then you know what they say, oh, that's just a, a sun cycle, you know, it's, the, it's the, the planet's just a gravitational pull. They would still dismiss it. They would, they would honor the, creation, but they would not honor the creator of the creation. Let's finish up here in Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So, we need to calm ourselves from the unrest by simply praising the Lord and being glad and spreading the gospel of Christ to others. When we're distracted, we're not happy people. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. Therefore, seeing we have this, what do we got? We have this ministry. The devil says, I gotta, I gotta get them so busy they can't think about the ministry. Seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy. There it is, see that? First thing he asked for was mercy, remember? Since we have this, received mercy, we faint not. We're going to move on but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness uh, like Joe Biden, nor handling the word of God deceitfully like Joe Biden, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, being honest to goodness people that are uh, truth tellers and truth sharers. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, to whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, 
should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Verse 6, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure, this ministry, in earthen vessels. We are to carry this out. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Letting God work through us as we minister the gospel to the entire world. So Lord, we thank you for this little simple formula. Help us. Yes, we need your mercy and your blessings and your favor. But you need us to continue to spread the gospel around the world, individually and collectively. We thank you for the other verses that share with us the blessings that come along with being daily faithful now. We just want to say praise the Lord this morning. Help us to start our days that way and end our days that way. Giving you much thanks for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand if you would. Take our hymn books and uh, sing a song of invitation for the Lord to contemplate his blessings. We can go through anything. We don't have to live in unrest and unpredictable uh, mentality. 291. Only trust him. Only trust him. Thank you. 